同事，各位同 members， good afternoon。We have a quorum. I call to order the meeting. The at this meeting today, we have to deal with a number of、um, agenda items. Let me please、um, finish、uh, what I have to say before I allow you to raise points of order. So this House Committee meeting has to deal with a number of、uh, items, including the Committee on Rules of Procedure report. Mr. Martin、um, uh, Dennis Kwok and Mr. Martin Lau, on behalf of other members, have、uh, put forward their proposed amendments to the Rules of Procedure. That's why I have、uh, scheduled five hours for this meeting. Four hours will be for members to this,、uh, give their views on the proposed amendments to the Rules of Procedure, and also. Uh, under the item bill,、uh, position on bills committees and subcommittees,、uh, I will deal with the、uh, three letters、uh, sent in by members. Now we will have a long meeting today, so I will arrange a short break of fifteen minutes at around four thirty today.、Uh, yes,、uh, Miss Claudia Mo, what's your point of order, please? Yes,、um, can I ask this? Now you wishfully ask. This finance committee to give way to the house committee, and then you join item seven, which is、uh, um, to amend the rules of procedure, and that could be unconstitutional. Uncon being unconstitutional is a serious matter; it could lead to a constitutional crisis any time. So, is that not、uh, too much of wishful thinking on your part? And may I ask you to consider withdrawing item seven from the agenda? If I may remind members, if it's a point of order, it's only because、uh, there is an error in the procedure of、uh, anything that's done not in accordance with the rules,、uh, and then that such matter could be raised. But、uh, what you said has nothing to do with、uh, point of order, really. But I can explain this. The finance committee may, on behalf of,、uh, on the basis of the chairman's or members' views, decide on the time. Uh, of the meeting, and that's a consistent arrangement with、um, the scheduled meetings for FC. As to whether、uh, there is anything that's unconstitutional、uh, in relation to the agenda today, I'm grateful to the legal adviser for giving us the, her professional advice before the meeting. And、um, on the whole, as, as far as the agenda of today is concerned, we do not notice anything that's unconstitutional. Yes,、uh, Mr. Ray Chan, what's your point of order, please? You have to allow me at least one minute. To speak, you should、um, convene a special meeting to deal with the item seven. Now、uh, you're supervising the finance committee, or you're moving it. Now originally、uh, we have allowed time for the finance committee this afternoon. Some members may not be able to attend tomorrow.、Uh, you always say the FC is very important. We mustn't、uh, stall it in any way. But now you are kicking the FC out of the way, and、uh, you're going to have this house committee meeting till 7:30. Just because you have the majority, you can do whatever you want. Mr. Ray Chan, we've all heard your views. Now again, this is not a point of order. Please do not、um, express your views.、Um, Uh, on the pretext of a point of order. Now, I have、uh, acceded to members' request to extend the meeting time of this meeting, so we could consider the report submitted by the co-、uh, committees on rules of procedure. Now, as the chairperson of the House Committee meeting, I have the power to include an item for on the agenda for discussion today. As for the、uh, meeting arrangement, we discussed that last time. While members are all、uh, members of the House Committee and the Finance Committee, so if we have a House Committee meeting today and a Finance Committee meeting tomorrow, you should attend both.、Uh, but I'm not going to debate with you on that. Mr. Kenneth Lang, what's your point of order, please? Yes,、um, the meeting arrangement tomorrow. Is it the case that it will be just a Finance Committee? Is that right? It can't be changed, right? It depends. On the progress of our meeting today, today I do not at at this point I do not see the need for a house committee meeting tomorrow. Can you split this meeting into two parts over two days? Can you do that? If the house committee 
uh, cannot uh, be finished, we should continue to 9 p.m., 10 p.m., 11 p.m. tonight. But you can't uh, move it to tomorrow because tomorrow there's another meeting scheduled. So you have to seek legal advice that tomorrow we cannot have a House Committee meeting. Now, in accordance with the rules of procedure, the chairman has the power to decide on the time of the House Committee. And uh, if uh, tomorrow we have a special uh, House Committee meeting, then it's a special meeting of the House Committee. Mr. Wu Chi Wei, now I will note down uh, who is abusing rules of procedure. Mr. Wu Chi Wei, if it's a point of order, please raise it. Now you've received a notice of the meeting. If you have any questions or comments on that, uh, you can come and talk to me or the clerk any time during office hours. But so far, I have not received any views on the meeting arrangement. And obviously, members are well aware of the meeting arrangement. I was here the whole week, and I've never received any queries from members about the meeting arrangement until now. So please note, members, I will allow members to uh, uh, raise genuine point of order, Mr. Wu Chi Wei. Well, meeting arrangement is important. In the past, uh, we've always said that there are, there are many important f uh, funding proposals uh, that need to be considered at the Finance Committee as soon as possible. But now, you are using the time of the FC for considering the rules of procedure. It is not appropriate. It is not what the House Committee should do. You should uh, call a special meeting to deal with it. You shouldn't ask the FC to make way. And then you have to look at the actual circumstances, and we do not know tomorrow whether it is a FC or a HC meeting. So this is totally inappropriate. Mr. Wood, this is not a point of order. That's the first point. Secondly, I note your views. If members have uh, any um, comments on the way I arrange meetings, uh, I welcome a discussion after the meeting. Uh, the um, scheduling of Finance Committee. Well, the clerk to the Finance Committee has already given notice to members on the meeting arrangement for the Finance Committee meeting. I'm sure you know exactly um, about the arrangement of FC meetings. Mr. Kenneth Leung, did you raise a point of order? I, I did, but you haven't answered me. Uh, Mr. Alvin Young, can you please raise a genuine point of order? Now, what I find uh, bothering is what exactly is the point of order, Madam Chair? We're talking about uh, the meeting arrangement. If it is nothing to do with uh, order, point of order, is, and then you are saying that we should raise this with you outside the meeting. But then we are at the House Committee meeting. We should be talking about uh, the arrangement of the House meeting. That's the best. And what are your, the, your office hours? What time should we go to see you? Why can't we consider House Committee matters at a House Committee meeting? So can you please give us specific views so uh, so we know then actually we cannot talk about uh, House Committee matters in, at a House Committee meeting? Well, if members really want uh, um, the Council to conduct its business smoothly, and if you have any comments on the way uh, the chairperson schedules meetings, then you can, uh, uh, we can have a communication at an agreed time, or you could write to the clerk to the House Committee. I'm sure members know very well about the meeting arrangement uh, before the start of the meeting. In accordance with the rules, uh, I have uh, informed members of the meeting arrangement. I have not received any comments from members on the uh, meeting arrangement until now. Mr. Ip Pin Yun, may I ask you to clarify this, Madam Chair? You said you received requests from members, but we uh, did not have the opportunity to raise this point. So which members made that request, please? A second question. Mm, while the uh, chairperson arranged a meeting, we know when a meeting starts and when it will end. So uh, we know the chairperson has the right to uh, power to decide on that. But if there's going to be a second session of the House committee meeting, and this with this still within the remit of the chairperson. Well, then, is it possible that after the conclusion of the meeting tomorrow, the chairperson may call another meeting on Sunday? And then, do you consider it one meeting or three meetings? Can you please clarify? Firstly, 
from non-establishment camp members, I received a request, including yourself, uh, for me to allow ample time for a discussion on amendments to the rules of procedure. So I've considered your request as well, and that's why I have extended this meeting. In accordance with the rules of procedure as the chairperson, I have the power to decide on the time and place of a meeting. Of course, before I do so, I will consult members uh, and see if there is a quorum for the time I proposed. Uh, I've done that before, and I will do it again if necessary. This has always been the con the way we go by. Uh, well, as a, you were once the chairman of the panel on education, you knew exactly how it worked. Now, since you m mentioned this, my request as well, can I clarify? Uh, we asked for ample time, but it can be done as a, in a special meeting. And my second point has not been responded to. Now, if we have two uh, different time slots or three different time slots, would that still count as one meeting? Let me answer that quickly. Now, a uh, special meeting, I think, uh, or not, really, it does not matter. It's, what matters is that there is sufficient time for discussion. That's the first point. Second point, if there is need to call um, House Committee meeting tomorrow, it will be a special meeting. And if I do set a time for the meeting, I will consult if members are able to attend, uh, as we always do. So that's all for points of order. Otherwise, I may. Yes, you have already spoken, Ms. Tanya Chen. May I remind you this, Madam Chair? You spoke at length just now. Uh, if uh, members want uh, this council to proceed smoothly with this business, then you should do blah, blah, blah. And you said um, up until today you have not received any comments from us. Uh, so are you not speculating that uh, points of order being raised at the meeting here by members uh, have other improper motives or uh, uh, that's um, uh, rule 41, bracket 5. Uh, may I remind members, please? Yes, I'm not imputing uh, motive. I'm uh, just pointing out a fact. Yes, Mr. Lang Yu Chong, I'll let you speak and then I will respond. And then uh, Dr. Kwakaki, Mr. Chu, I think Mr. James Tewing, and so on. And then I'll draw a line. Uh, uh, can I seek clarification? Uh, you said at the beginning that this meeting will go on till 7 p.m. And then a uh, member queried you, and then you said 7.30. And when ma another member asked you, you said there could be a special meeting tomorrow. So for a special meeting, uh, other than seeing whether there's a quorum, if it's a special meeting, is it on any special item? Why do you anticipate a um, special meeting is necessary? And what would that special meeting cover? Can you please tell us? And what constitutes a special meeting? OK, you've made your point clear. Make Mr. Kenneth Leung. Special meeting. Isn't there a need to serve a notice? If you only tell us at 7.30 tonight, uh, the, or 9 p.m. tonight, or whether there will be a special meeting tomorrow, then it's not in line with the rules of procedure. Item 7 is uh, included in a regular House Committee meeting, but tomorrow a special meeting could again be dealing with uh, other business on the, of Item 7. That's not in line with the uh, usual arrangement under the House rules. Can I ask the clerk and the legal advisor to clarify those two points, please? Thank you. You no, know, you've asked your question. Mr. Chu, Eddie Chu, since many are asking questions, I cannot uh, allow questions on meeting arrangement indefinitely. Mr. Eddie Chu, please. Chairman, would you please tell us clearly, today yeah, I think it will be five hours, and you think that item number seven would be the one that needs most time to for discussion. So if you refer to the three sets of paper, under item 7. We're talking about um, over a hundred pages. Why do you think that uh, dozen, um, amendments to dozens of rules, of, uh, rules with uh, 60 plus members, this should be the arrangement? I don't understand. You never told us whether we have to go through them one by one or uh, over the three sets of papers or uh, any other way. I will address what you have raised um, later. I can choose. Dr. Kwakaki and Mr. James Toe, last two. 
Mr. Jeremy Tam. No supplementary because you have already uh, asked a question that is not related to point, uh, points of order. Uh, if you're not going to ask it, uh, then leave it. Let's go to the uh, agenda proper. Mr. To ask your question. I said that uh, I will give um, a reply in uh, in one go after hearing all your points related to the points of order. You are a chairman. You make arrangements for the meeting. When members ask you about meeting arrangements, I think you at least have to give us some patience. Well, this meeting will last till after seven o'clock. Have you considered, Chairman, when Mr. Ip Kin Yun and other members ask for sufficient time, has it occurred to you or uh, have you spoken to the Secretariat to make uh, arrangements? That is, uh, apart from discussions on the rules of procedure, we have the normal House meeting, House committee meeting about um, business next week, and then you, you can have, give time for the Finance Committee to have a meeting tomorrow. There is a whole day, and surely there will be more than what we have. What uh, the, the length of time we have today? So it will be a clean cut, and we don't have to guess whether there will be uh, more meetings tomorrow because we have to ask assistance uh, to uh, draft um, documents for us. Yes, yes, uh, y yes. You have made yourself clear. I will answer you shortly, Doctor Bukaki. I think a number of things have to be clarified. If a member asked uh, asks something for you, and then you can, as uh, as you wish, put um, an item that is related to rules of procedure at the end. Then I ask you to have a special meeting just to discuss that, because you know that it's very important. Well, at the moment, loyalists are quite powerful. They can do whatever they want. Cut a meeting, uh, extend a meeting. First of all, I don't trust you um, because uh, there is no discussion at all, and there is um, a motion of no confidence. And this is a poor precedent because we don't know whether there will be a meeting tomorrow. And government officials uh, for attending the finance committee should be there at nine o'clock tomorrow. So is it the case that well, I'm Starry Lee. Uh, I I can ask you to uh, to come at nine o'clock or maybe ten or eleven. There is no decorum whatsoever. You have expressed your yourself. No, I haven't finished. This is not a, an occasion for you to express yourself. It's about point of order. You have already spoken, Mr. Jeremy Tam. Mr. Tam, please. You're not going to ask the question. I then I will give. Uh, um. An overall reply. I have already given you twenty minutes. I have given you enough patience, Mr. Roy Kong. He chose not to speak. Mr. Tam, please proceed. Do continue, Mr. Tam. Please, please go ahead. Chairman, can you hear me? Please go on. Well, I hope that uh, when you allow other uh, a member to speak, you do need to listen because my microphone wasn't turned on, and I was speaking. You did not even look at me, and you said that I did not uh, say anything. But when I am um, speaking, can you ask other members not to not to make any noise? Yes, uh, please, uh, don't. But um, well, there is noise coming from more from this side. Mr. Tan, please continue. I am trying to assist you, Chairman. The well, previous meeting arrangements was that there will be an, an an extra session of the finance committee, and you said that well after house committee there will be the FC and then if need be there will be another uh, session of HC. However, this time round is different. We you have pushed FC to tomorrow, and you don't we don't even know that whether there will be a continuation of the HC. It was decided last week. You've changed the um, rules of the game, and yet it's changed again. So we don't know uh, because things are chopped and changed all the time. We don't know whether there will be a meeting tomorrow. How do you expect the administration to prepare, Mr. Um, Andrew Wen, Mr. Roy Kwong? I do. I think that um, you can't express 
your view on uh, meeting arrangements anymore because I've already spent 20 minutes to listen to you. You're not going to ask, Mr. Kong? You, you, well, um, how? When it comes to a rules of procedure 75, when it comes uh, to chairman of the HC, um, uh, decisions will be made, but there should be at least a three days a notice about a meeting arrangement. Yes, uh, there, there will be a, a, a case when short notice is given. I do think, chairman, you need to clarify. Three days um, notice. How can you um, change it to uh, making a decision today whether to have a meeting tomorrow? So. Under 75 bracket 14, how do you um, clarify the individual circumstance? Uh, because we do need uh, a clear a clarification so that we know what to do tomorrow. Uh, Mr. Wilson, uh, Dr. Fernando Jones, you have uh, something to say, but we can have a discussion uh, l later, but don't use this chance to say something that is not related to um, Order. The arrangement is um, to have the meeting till half past seven. It is unprecedented that we have a house meeting lasting five hours. And if we can't finish, we will uh, take some time from the FC tomorrow. Well, I think the most controversial item is item 7. It is related to the amendments to the ROP. What is the urgency? Does it mean that the urgency uh, supersedes the eight um, items in the FC agenda? Mr. Andrew Wen, are you going to give us an overall reply? Yes. Of course, uh, I think that uh, the arrangements made by the chairman is really poor. And uh, the period of notice is too short, it's too rushed. There is no urgency. And there is no special reason for you to arrange it in this way. Of course, you know that um, there will be a discussion. Are you going to just deem roll ahead? At least give us a more um, convincing reason. Y you don't have to do it in this way. It's, um, it doesn't look good at all. Well, the reason why it uh, there is a sh there is short notice why I want it dealt with today and tomorrow because various members including uh, those from Panamocrat from the Pandemic Pan Democratic camp and loyalists camp said to the president that they would like uh, to have uh, to put the uh, rules of procedure item on the uh, council meeting agenda as soon as possible let us send to me said, uh, said that um, they said there should be a special meeting arranged for the HC to um, discuss this item. That's why we have uh, make arrangements to have a four-hour meeting to address your concern. You or you said that uh, you want it to be done as soon as possible as well. And in relation to the uh, period of notice, well, first whether we there will be sufficient time for item seven. If we can have a discussion uh, calmly, well, we have four hours. But you understand that uh, if you expect um, this to be dealt with in just one meeting or uh, a few more meetings to uh, resolve all controversial matters related to the ROP, that is impossible. So we will focus it on uh, ex expression of uh, comments on the report of the CROP. It's not to express whether you support them or not. I know that some members will directly make the request to the president for the item to be discussed uh, in a council meeting. So you, you can feel free to write to the president to express your views. That is how you deal with other views. About the special meeting. Well, I have... Um, on Wednesday, I uh, sent the notice through the uh, clerk to you all and the arrangements for the FC. I have already spoken to the chairman of the FC, and the FC chairman has already um, mentioned about the arrangements on the notice. And it's, we have met the requirements of three days. This is special because uh, this is the first time when members from different groups ask for amendments to the ROP. I ask you to be understanding. If you think that I have not done enough, 
please feel free to come to talk to me after the meeting. Please do not make use of um, points of order questions uh, to express something that is not related to it. First of all, confirmation of meeting. Is the minutes of the fourth meeting held on the 3rd of November 2017? Members so far have not expressed any uh, proposals or amendments. I ask members uh, to endorse this uh, minutes is, and is confirmed. Let me remind you, if you ask for further clarification in relation to meeting arrangements, I will not do so because I've already made myself clear. I will think that uh, you abuse um, points of all the questions uh, to express your views in relation to meeting arrangements. Ms. Claudia Mo, what's your point of order? I still think that you have not answered Mr. Kenneth Lung's question, which is very important. This is just a normal House committee meeting. Tomorrow, you said, is a special HC meeting. I have already explained about my arrangements. Mr. Kenny Flom, there is one point that is not answered. One item. Well, for the first part is uh, a normal HC meeting. However, the second part of the same item will be discussed in a special house come meeting. I don't think this is normal. I don't think um, in the house rules there are there are any provisions catering for this. Can we hear from the clerk to see whether this uh, is in order? Well, if an item is not finished, it, it's common to see that item discussed in a special meeting or a continuation of the meeting. Mr. Eddie Ju, please ask your question. I'd like to get a clarification from you. You said that, um, well, discussion on item 7 would be a chance for members uh, to give an overall re uh, reply. So is it the case that uh, each member can only speak once? Uh, that depends on, on the time we have. Mr. Alvin Young, I sincerely ask you to explain Mr. Kenneth Leung's question because that is a very valid question. Because if this is a normal HC meeting, and if tomorrow's meeting is a special meeting, then strictly speaking, they are two completely different meetings. And if tomorrow's special meeting is to deal with uh, unfinished business today, then it's not uh, logical. I have already told you about the arrangement. I will defer to the legal advisor to see if she has any views. I don't want to discuss um, with you further on this point because we do have a lot of items on the agenda. Legal advisor. Thank you. Under the rules of procedure in relation to uh, meeting arrangements of House Committee, it talks about the meeting. It doesn't say anything about a, a, special, a special meeting or what is a normal meeting. And in the House Committee, uh, it says that uh, HC usually takes place at half past two uh, on a Friday afternoon. It doesn't say anything about uh, what is uh, a routine meeting or what is a special, a regular meeting or what is a special meeting. Well, whether it is a regular or a special meeting is only a form, a description. I think it's down to the um, um, the substance. Well, if we are to have a special meeting tomorrow, then yes, uh, it's uh, a different. It's a special meeting. The form is a special meeting, and the chairman may set the agenda. Let's con let's continue. Um, report by chairman on a meeting with the chief secretary for administration. Ms. Tanya Chen, please ask your point. May please um, ask your question. This is only a second. The second time when I speak. Well, as uh, after. Well, Chairman, you are an accountant. I'm sure that you are quite familiar with what happens in a meeting. But if it's uh, one meeting or a couple of meetings and the continuation of a meeting are two different things because the second meeting, second separate meeting, will have to follow usual arrangements, say, for example, um, issue of notice, etc. So you can't say that, well, tomorrow we have another meeting. It can be a special meeting or a continuation because if you don't clarify this, it can happen again. That is very important. Uh, Ms. Chan, uh, I hope that you will give us an answer. Uh, well, the legal advisor has already made a very important point. Well, whether, it's the, uh, uh, whether it is the um, 
the Imperial Palace or the uh, co collocation, uh, the Hong Kong Palace, uh, but there are notices given. Now, there's no special specific provision in the House Rules of Procedure in relation to special meeting. As the chairperson, I will decide on the agenda. I hope that our members uh, see this point. We have given notice on the arrangement today before the meeting. I know members may have strong views on amendments to the Rules of Procedure, but on meeting arrangement, I have tried my best to uh, give more time for members to discuss the matter, and I've uh, also allowed enough time for another meeting if necessary. Um, let's go to the uh, substantial discussion because we spent half an hour on this already. Matters rising report of the chairman with the chief secretary for administration. There is nothing special to report. Members, if you wish to uh, discuss further the meeting arrangement, I will not accept that request because I've explained all the points clearly and the legal advisor has also given clear explanation. If you have any queries, I will give you written explanation after the meeting. Yes, Mr. Charles Mock. Another point. I know uh, it was a bit, um, there was a bit of confusion as you chaired the meeting just now. So you can't just consider confirmation of minutes of meeting as uh, as uh, the meeting as if the minutes have confirmed, but there may be members have comments on the minutes. A confirmation of minutes on meeting. Can you please deal with that? I've already asked members if you have uh, agreed. No, no, no. Maybe you as well just um, let, uh, um, pass all the other items. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. No, I think it's clear that uh, members have confirmed the minutes. It's I don't need to go back to the video. I said myself that the minutes are confirmed. I have said it myself. I know that. Madam Chair, let me speak, please. Madam Chair, it's not for you to say confirmed, and that is confirmed. You would at least count to one, two, three. You didn't even do that. And then the minutes are confirmed. We've never done that in the past. Mr. Ray Chen, please take your seat. Now, you pointed out I did not count one, two, three. Sorry, I never counted one, two, three before. If you keep uh, asking other questions, just raise the questions. Don't point out that I'm not following the usual procedure. So what uh, do you wish to change? What amendments? Yes, I know Mr. Kenneth Leung has, um, suggest has uh, comments on the uh, minutes. Uh, Roman letter two, um, same duty, the last sentence. The administration plan to give notice of its intention to resume the proceedings on the bill at a later time after the debate on the motion on the collocation arrangement for the Guangzhou Shenzhen Hong Kong Express Rail Link had been completed. Now, my apology, I did not attend the uh, House Committee meeting on that day because I was out of town. So that's why I studied the minutes carefully, because I because I do need to read the uh, minutes, and I see two questions. I have two questions here. First, uh, it says here at a later time. I don't think it's at a later time. I, I my understanding is that the government will immediately resume the proceeding. It's not at a later time. That's the first point. Second point, because I did not attend the meeting. My apology again. House Rule 25A. Now, when uh, do we have? When is it necessary to have a verbatim record of the minutes? Because without a verbatim record, I cannot follow what was discussed at the meeting. Yes, it's a summary of the decisions made. But then, uh, for many subcommittee me meetings, we have verbatim records. So uh, the House Committee is an important meeting. So I hope there will be a verbatim record rather than just a summary of the points covered. Now, I cannot answer both of these um, questions right away. If you wish to amend uh, minutes, please send, um, please uh, do it in writing. But just now, no members ex made any comments, but since it was uh, rather confusing. So if you wish to amend the minutes, please uh, write, write in, and then we can deal with it at another meeting. That's the best I could manage.
Yes, Mr. Martin Liu. Madam Chair, you pr propose that we confirm the minutes, and at least uh, f f I saw members raising their hands uh, in support of uh, confirming the minutes. That's why you say the minutes were confirmed. I don't think you can go back on that item. I don't need to re uh, watch the video. I have confirmed the minutes, but I have exercised my discretion to allow you to propose amendments. If you wish to propose amendments, please do so in writing. Perhaps I will tell you now what you propose to amend, and I'll ask the clerk to uh, note that, and I cannot conf uh, decide today whether to accept your amendments. Mr. Elvin Young, what am amendments do you wish to propose? No, I want to speak on the next item. Mr. Dr. Kwakaki, what uh, amendments do you wish to propose uh, on the next item? Mr. Andrew Wang, what uh, amendments, please? I've raised my hand for a long time Is uh, for, about the item before that. I'm almost getting a cram. I, and you, you said so justly that uh, you are right now, really. And I, I usually I respect uh, Martin Liu, but then he echoed you. So you are, you know, you you know this is not uh, this is, if it's about the style of uh, how the chair conduct a meeting. Please uh, speak to me after the meeting. Now, can I ask the legal advisor? Uh, she said uh, at, uh, the textual understanding is that there, uh, there's no mention of that. But uh, do we have to follow convention in this council? Uh, in the past. What is the convention of conducting special meetings? We do not follow that. Now, of course, we know the rules of procedure cannot cover all scenarios. Listen me, hear me out. Can do we need to go by convention? Is that uh, the uh, reference point uh, in the way we conduct uh, meetings? Convention is that a point of reference? I have completed discussion on this item. I, uh, you can uh, um, make inquiries with the legal advisor after the meeting because we've already completed the item. I've let you speak already. You have uh, raised more than uh, once uh, a point of uh, point of order. Next, uh, Mr. James, so please. I ask you, Madam Chair. That uh, you will take uh, the crop out of a regular meeting, and then, um, then, then we can have the finance meet committee meeting, and then on the whole of Saturday we can have a special meeting of the House committee. But you didn't answer my question. Well, I don't need to answer your question, Mr. Tobe. I only need to answer your questions on the agenda. I don't have to answer you whether I've considered that. I've explained uh, my position already. Now you've heard members' views. Of course, you could also seek the views of the pro establishment camp. So can we do this? That is tomorrow, the whole day. We have a special meeting. And because now we don't even know whether there will be meeting tomorrow, how are we going to prepare for that? Now, I won't consider it. I've made my decision. OK, if, um, if there's nothing else, I. Ms. Claudia Mo, you're speaking for the third time. If you always abuse uh, points of order, then I will have to stop you from speaking. I don't have a choice because if I allow you to keep abusing points of order, I cannot conduct this meeting. So I have to give you a warning. We have spent 40 minutes. I have spent 40 minutes to deal with uh, expression views uh, rather than genuine points of order. So, Ms. Mo, I have no choice but to stop you from speaking, on, and then I will uh, see that as misbehavior. I have to first um, explain the arrangement uh, on how I'm going to enforce the rules, uh, otherwise members won't have a chance to speak. So if members continue to uh, raise fake points of order or um, take uh, 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 on the pretext of points of order, you express your views, and if you do it repeatedly, I will have to stop you from speaking. If you keep doing that, I will have to warn you, and if you still keep doing that, I will have to ask you to leave the conference room, and then you won't have a chance to speak. Ms. Claudia Mo, let me go first. Um, uh, James, so let wait. Let me speak first. Please stay calm. You don't have to keep um, shouting or, or, or rushing things through. I just want to speak to you in a calm uh, manner. That's not a point of order. 
the confirmation of minutes, the minutes have not been confirmed. I raised my hand before you asked whether we are giving. I'm sorry, I have already confirmed the minutes. If you uh, think that's not the case from watching the video, you can confirm me afterwards. But I am quite confident that I've confirmed the minutes. Matters arising report of my meeting with the Secretary for Administration. There is nothing special to report. Item 3 on the agenda. Business for the council meeting of the 2nd of November 2017. I have dealt with points of order for 35 minutes. Mr. James Sowes, please take your seat. Yes, I'm also getting angry because we spent 35 minutes. Who's abusing points of order? I think we all know very well. Okay, please take your seat. Please take your seat. Please take your seat, members. If you want to um, speak uh, one by one on item, I'll give you a chance, but that's not how you behaved just now. Mr. James So, please. If you don't speak, then I'll continue. Item 3 on the agenda, business for the council meeting of the 22nd of November 2017. A questions. I gave you a chance to speak, but you didn't speak. So yes, please. I gave you a chance. I let you speak, but you didn't speak. So please continue now. Please continue. It's the third time I invite you to speak, but you won't speak, Mr. James Toe. Please give. Let Mr. James Toe speak. It's my chance to speak. Madam Chair, usually um, when it comes to the item on the meeting with the Chief Secretary for Administration, when you say there's nothing to report, you would look around and see, or, or you may ask, or, or you would wait a little bit to see if uh, other members may uh, ask you to uh, convey any message to him. I want you to convey this to him. Now, I'm not going to, to uh, debate with you about um, the agenda, whatever. You know, I care very much about the stamp duty bill. Last time, you asked the Chief Secretary of Administration, he gave a response. So this time, it doesn't matter whether you are going to review the video or whatever, but can you please go back to tell the Chief Secretary again? Now, it's a fact that uh, all of a sudden the government um, terminated the uh, committee stage discussion of the bill, and he said he agreed to some of the amendments of members. Can you please ask him to come back to the council as soon as possible? Can you do that? You have already written to the House Committee on that. You asked me to convey that view to the Chief Secretary. I'm well aware of it. Uh, we will deal with that to request under another item. Thank you. Any other points, please? Dr. Kwakaki? Dr. Kwakaki, please. Madam Chair, you spoke to um, Matthew Jung. Chief Secretary, apart from the stamp duty, there are many other government bills to be tabled, but then things are really odd now. The government is not tabling or is not giving any explanation on the bills uh, that the uh, Council will consider. The stamp duty bill is just one of them. There are many other bills uh, still being held back. So have you talked to Matthew Jung? Can the government be more fair? Now the government says it wants to address pressing needs of the public and property prices are already so high. But when would he um, table the bill again? Uh, that, so uh, if you ask him what's the reply, that's the first point. Second point for the other bills are being held up. Is there a timetable for them? If the government keeps um, stalling things and playing tricks like that, then as the chair of the House Committee, don't you have the duty to, to uh, query him? I'm afraid I can't answer you. Did you ask him? The, sorry, this is an expression of uh, comment, Miss Colimo. 
we express our views to you because we ask you to express our views on our behalf and you said that you can't give the undertaking no it's not that you're confused I said uh, I will re I will record it don't put words into my mouth well you are now the chairman of the house committee you will report to us at uh, your meeting with the CS4A last time you mentioned that uh, Mr. James Toe asked about uh, the stamp duty bill it was go it was to be withdrawn and this and that and the administration planned to uh, after the Sorry, I haven't finished. No, I'm, I'm afraid I can't give you too much time. I'll have to move on the next member because I can't give you indefinite time. If you have detailed uh, comments uh, to make, well, you know that uh, you can um, propose it to be an agenda item or give me a letter. How much time do I have? 30 seconds. Give you more than I can. Uh, it's unprecedented. It is indeed unprecedented to have only 30 seconds to speak. Please start. Please uh, um, restart the counter. It's my time, nothing to do with you. You've all read the news. You learned that when it comes to collocation, the co cooperation arrangement, tomorrow morning uh, the agreement will be signed. In the afternoon, there's a chance that, uh, that there will be a press be briefing on Wednesday. The um, Matthew Jung um, attended. I hope that uh, when it comes to this important agreement, uh, there will be a special HC meeting to ask the administration to get, come to speak to us on details. Mr. Alvin Young. First of all, I'd like to know 30 seconds. It is a great disrespect. You, well, uh, you may want to change it, but in the past, we always have. Uh, one minute. If more people want to speak, do we only have 10 seconds? So if you want to change something, at least let members know. We may have different political views, but at least I expect you to be fair. What's more, Mr. Kenneth Leung? I have already drawn the line. Well, uh, it's never been done this way. Well, I will make uh, I, I make a report to the CS4A on agenda items. If uh, there are individual topics that you would like to uh, have them reported to the CS4A, members know full well that you may write to the CS4A. Mr. Dennis Kwok attended um, the meeting with me as well. Sometimes uh, you speak through him. You understand that in relation to this item, we talk about um, items that have already been discussed in the on the agenda. Mr. Wuchi Wai, please continue. Mr. Wuchi Wai. But it should be Mr. Kenneth Leung. He comes before me. Yes, yes, Mr. Kenneth Leung. I want to ask when will the administration, at the earliest um, time, um, introduce the subsidiary legislation again? Because they said that before 31st of December, they will not. Con they would not consider introducing any subsidiary legislation. How come 31st of December? I find it really puzzling. Chairman, can you give an undertaking that in relation to this item, you will ask the CS4A whether there is indeed this date, um, 31st of December? Mr. Wuchi Wai, I think the controversy um, boils down to the ROP. This is an eternal matter of the LegCo. The administration has been making statements on this uh, about their stance. That is highly inappropriate. I hope, Chairman, that you need to say very clearly to the CS4A, the administration should not get involved in the uh, ROP, Mr. Jeremy Tam. I hope, Chairman, next time when you meet uh, Mr. Matthew Jung, please say this to him. Oh, we all we feel that we are being monitored when we attend meetings in LegCo. When there are council meetings, uh, there are people there uh, doing head counts of uh, members going in and out of the chamber. Well, we are on the first floor, and if you post people on the first floor, that's fine. But when there are quorum calls, you find people all over the place, first floor, ground floor, different um, entrances and exits. Dr. Fernando Joe. I will give uh, an overall reply. 
It's a point of order. Then you have to wait, Mr. Ip Kin Yun. Mr. Ip Kin Yun, this is a point of order. Uh, oh, please go ahead then, Doctor Fernando Joe. I challenge uh, your decision to put item number seven on the agenda because I don't think it should be there because it is um, about a discussion on the on the proposed amendments uh, to the ROP. In relation to these proposals, um, the Committee on Rules of Procedure has already made a uh, suggestion uh, to the President uh, to seek legal advice. And I understand that um, the legal advisor uh, will be funded by LegCo funding. And it is a point, a legal point. This is not a point of order. Does it mean that uh, you won't allow me to express my view that I challenge you? This is really about um, a point of order. You 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 don't allow me to do that. I do think that everything is in order. All my decisions are in order. Mr. Kin Yun, if you are not going to speak, then I will skip you. Well, you have to first deal with uh, Dr. Jones' point. I have already dealt with it. Uh, if you don't think so, it's only a difference uh, in of opinion. I hope that after I've spoken, you will deal with um, Dr. Jones' point of order. Thus far, in my experience, we have, in relation to the discussion of uh, CS4A, uh, some very in great detail, we had uh, abundant time to have a discussion. That's my experience, and it has indeed happened. So, if you say, Chairman, that uh, it's never done before, that's not correct at all. So thirty seconds is unreasonable. I'll give an overall reply. Meeting with the CS4A, the arrangements are like um, what we have done before. Let me finish first. I have to first reply to members, as we've done before. We have uh, we talked to the CS4A on. Um, Agenda items, and in in relation to individual views of members, I will forward the views uh, to the CS4A and ask him to reply to you. And views expressed uh, are not consensus of the uh, of the House Committee, but I respect your views. I have them recorded and have them forwarded to the CS4A. As you can see, that is almost an hour. Members have been asking um, questions on point of order, and I've already said that. When it comes to point of order, well, it only happens uh, when there are errors or when uh, when um, rules or procedures are not complied with. I'll defer to the legal advisor. When it comes to point of order um, questions uh, during a meeting, say for example, uh, there are irregularities, uh, things that are not in line with the rules of procedure. And it has to be rectified uh, forthwith. That is in relation to the course of uh, a meeting. That's why members are allowed to interrupt, because uh, during um, the course of a meeting, if there are irregularities uh, to the pr to, uh, to the procedure, it has to be rectified forthwith. However, if members ask questions uh, or raise challenges or uh, express a disagreement with the chairman's decision, then it is not a point of order because. It will be a debate uh, with the chairman on uh, whether the chairman um, is is right or the decision is justified. A decision made by the chairman under the rules uh, under the rules of procedure is a final decision. I have to move on to the next um, item: business for the council meeting of twenty second of November twenty seventeen. Eight questions. Well, there are already twenty-two questions. Uh, range six oral questions, six questions uh, seeking oral answers, and sixteen questions uh, seeking written reply. Aguan uh, Yugo, B bills first and second moving of um, second reading. No notice has been received. C government mo no motion. No notice has been received. D members motions. There are three subsidiary legislations, and the uh, amendment deadline is the thirteenth of December. They are proposed resolutions. I will let you speak shortly. I have already 
uh, given you one hour to deal with points of order. Uh, you you may do so um, in relation to the business on the twenty second of November. On that day, on the on that council meeting, there will well in relation to the uh, business for council meeting of uh, twenty two second twenty two of twenty uh, second of November. I asked you for your views. You have already. You're, you've already been asking questions related to points of order for one hour. Let me remind members again. Let me remind members again. I will give three minutes. I remind members, if you don't return to your seat, then I will see that uh, you have misbehaved. I have already said that uh, this uh, is... Uh, Disorderly um, conduct. I have already given you one hour. Final warning, Doctor Fernando Zhang, uh, Doctor uh, Helena Wong, Mister Roy Kwong. If you don't return to your seat, then I will rule that. No, I have already reminded you. If you continue to make to make use of points of order, Miss Helena Wong, if you don't return to your seat, then I will rule that. Um, it is a disor it is disorderly conduct. You won't be able to attend if we change the venue. I have already said it. I will give you a chance to speak. This is uh, your your chance. Go back to your seats. Then I'll allow you to speak. I plan to let you speak. Please go back to your seats. Yeah. D members motions in relation to three. Let me finish first, then I will ask you to speak as a whole in relation to the council meeting on the twenty second. D members motion. There are um, three. I will let you speak shortly. Please let me finish first. I will give you a chance to speak in relation um, to subsidiary leg legislations um, under the. Um, Interpretation uh, General Clause Ordinance. The first one is uh, from Mr. Frankie Yick in relation to shipping and port control. They are proposed resolutions. Second group, they are from Mr. Horace Jung in relation uh, to Electoral Affairs Commissions. They are proposed uh, resolutions. The third group, from Mr. Um, Jimmy uh, Ronick Chen in relation to um, banking. On top of that, uh, there are also two items uh, that are not um, binding. They are for carried forward from the last meeting. That is in relation to the council meeting on the 22nd of November. Uh, in relation to the council meeting, business of the council meeting, any questions? Mr. Alvin Young? Oh, 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 all right, so please uh, press the button. Mr. Alvin Young? 30 seconds, Mr. Young. Yes, uh, there is a time limit. Thirty seconds, Mr. Young. I want to protest your decision of allowing us only thirty seconds because it's done without a consultation and it is not in line with convention. And this is great disrespect to members. Two, when it comes to B bills, first reading and moving of second reading. Uh, for three times altogether, the administration has not introduced any first and second reading of bills. I want to express my strong uh, disappointment because, because unless nothing is happening, how come there is no bills uh, to be read first or second time? If Mr. To, if you are not going to speak, then we'll skip you. Mr. Jeremy Tam, are you going to speak? Please do. Please speak. My microphone wasn't on. My microphone wasn't on. Please turn on, Mr. Mr. Tam. I can, I can, I can hear you, Mr. Tam. Mr. Tam, please continue. Uh, please set the counter at zero. Thirty seconds is precious. You have taken several seconds from uh, from me. Thirty seconds. I don't know um, where that came from. Perhaps next time is fifteen or ten seconds. 
we press the button you did not look at it and you just uh, go to the next one and then we have to start pressing buttons all over again it's not fair mr young's point is something i wanted to say when it comes to first uh, reading and moving of second reading is it the case that there are no other bills or is something happening with the administration shouldn't we hear an explanation from the administration you're repeating the point raised by other members well uh, mr ray chan if you're going to repeat what others have said please don't i was going to speak uh, under matters arising but it's like you're doing your own verse speaking going to two three four five six items so before you go to the next item please don't ignore what is going on here when i was going to speak of course you have the right to draw a line but before you draw a line you have to tell members that i'm going to draw a line please press the button because that's the convention that's why i want to uh, raise the point of order i was waiting for you to give me a chance but you did not give me a chance and then you simply move on to the next item and this is the point of order. A decision, uh, well, I have to try to strike a balance uh, to conduct the meeting and to allow members to speak. Dr. Kokaki. Well, I'm sure we all know what's going on here. Whether this is normal today, um, the public who have been following our meeting would know very well. Well, you're the one who making things up normal. It's the first time ever that uh, you have um, moved everything out of the way, and uh, that's ridiculous. And now you have the 30 min second uh, time limit. Um, uh, you're now supposed to speak on business for the council meeting of the 22nd of November. In accordance with the rules of procedure, I ask the meeting be adjourned. Uh, which rule, please, of the rules of procedure? The member will, so will have to raise that, please. If you can't, uh, well, rule 30... I know, but uh, for a member who raises it, then it's not um, uh, in line with the order. Rule 40, Rule 40, if I remind you, yes, Rule 40, adjournment of a meeting, right? Um, rule 40, bracket 4, the rules of procedure and house of rule, house rules uh, d have not uh, laid down the procedures uh, when members move a motion to adjourn a meeting. In accordance with uh, Rule 40, bracket 4, at a meet committee of the council, a member may move without notice that further proceedings of the committee be now adjourned. And remember, if uh, the motion is um, passed, then the council shall resume. But if the motion is negative, then the committee shall continue its proceedings. I'd like to point out for this particular provision, um, this is about um, adjourning a committee of a council. It's not about uh, adjourning the entire council. Now, Dr. Kwok, uh, the intention of your motion is for the whole House committee to be adjourned. If I go uh, by Art Rule 40, Bracket 3, uh, and the spirit thereof, uh, I've actually sought the advice of legal advisor and as the chairperson of the House committee, I... Uh, decide that in accordance with um, rule four, uh, that rule forty bracket four does not apply to the House Committee because we have to deal with um, um, ag the agenda of the Council meeting, so that's why it, it's not applicable. You're abusing your powers. You are um, departing from the normal way in dealing with the matters. You uh, impose a time limit of 30 seconds and then you keep speaking. You don't give other members a chance to speak. It's already not in line with the spirit of mutual respect at the House Committee. If you've also abused your power in relation to the application scope of 40 bracket 3. Now, I've already made a ruling. Dr. Kwok, if you're not uh, happy with my ruling, you can come and speak to me after the meeting. No, I'm saying I have lost all confidence in you now. No, this is not the right forum to discuss my f ruling, Ms. Kalimo. Now, I'm getting, you know, really scary now. You, you, you used to be gentle, but now you are really pushing things through. Ms. Claudia Mo, I said already, if you have any comments on the council meeting of the 22nd of November, you can say so, but uh, this is not a chance for you to criticize me. You could uh, um, speak to me after meeting or you could uh, speak to the press. No, I'm saying, uh, under what powers do you, could you impose a time limit of 30 seconds? It's never been heard before. 
Mr. Andrew Zhang Wayne. Now, I am also criticizing you, but uh, it's about uh, how you deal with the, the agenda. You know, you're being really childish. It's like um, uh, there's a plate of rice there. If you don't eat it, I'll take it. So while we're protesting, you won't deal with it. Is that how you conduct business? Now, you say this meeting is not in a normal state. It's you who caused that. And uh, I asked about convention, which is very important, but you didn't even answer that point. Mr. Wu Chi Wai, please. For a few times in a row, the administration is not um, giving notice on any bills for first reading and moving of second reading. Have you ever explored this with the administration? Is it your understand that uh, is it your understanding that the government has no bills uh, to refer to this council for consideration? And so, therefore, we don't need to set up bills committees. Is that not necessary? Mr. Wu, may I remind you, other members have already made the same point. Uh, later on, we are going to deal with the free motions moved by members, so it's not directly related to this item. Dr. Fernando Zhang, I already said it's a point of order. You didn't even let me finish. Please let me finish my point of order, which, which, uh, Rule, please. Can you point out which rule, please? Item seven of the agenda, which is uh, uh, which are uh, amendments on proposed amendments on the uh, rules of procedure. That's not a point of order. I've already allowed you to speak to for the third time. I said I've considered the advice given by the legal advisor. I believe uh, what I've included in the agenda today are in order. Mr. Eddie Chu, if you won't speak, can I um, give you this first 16 characters for the 22nd of November council meeting? Now, Matthew Jung said uh, that he has no plan to suspend the tabling of bills, so I want to ask what exactly is happening because he said there's no plan to suspend the tabling of bills, but it's been suspended for three weeks, so how shall we read that? Uh, as the chair of the House Committee, how come you don't tell us anything? Well, I'm being very patient, Mr. Chu, you're repeating the point. You're repeating a point. Uh, next, uh, Ms. Tanya Chen. We have only 30 seconds to speak, and as soon as we repeat, you want to stop us. Uh, first of all, I don't know how that uh, 30 seconds come, came about. I don't get it at all. And I have to say this again. Uh, for three weeks, there are no bills for first reading and moving or second reading. Now, as a member, you must have attended a joint many bills committee. Usually, it's towards the end of the term that uh, all the bills are, are rushed through. Now, if they don't table bills now, then very soon uh, the, there will be a shortage of conf meeting rooms. Mr. Yip Kin Yun. Well, I'm sure members agree. Usually, I'm rather calm at meetings, but today I'm really angry. Uh, may I remind you, Mr. If you're not happy with me, it's not the occasion to raise that. I'm already very angry. I'll give you 30 seconds, but let me remind you, I'm just uh, using the same standards in applying the rules. Uh, give 30 seconds for Mr. Ip, please. At a, in a meeting. You know, we know why we are in this extraordinary state of affairs. It's because of the rules of procedure. But still, under the circumstance, we should still conduct a normal meeting. That means a normal meeting means that within the scope of the rules of procedure, all members should be allowed to speak as far as possible, as long they are complying with the rules of procedure. And the chair should give them ample time. You've already had plenty of discretion. Um, to show, to impose a time limit, but it cannot be 30 seconds. I hope you will re change that 30 second limit at once. Now, when I will um, carefully consider it, when things are less chaotic, uh, yes, I may adjust that later. Please, uh, I need your help on that. Item four on the agenda: business for the council meeting of the 29th of November 2017. Eight questions. Uh, 22 questions have been uh, scheduled. Uh, six oral questions and 16 written questions. B. Bill first reading and moving of second reading. No notice has been received yet. C. Government motion. No notice has been received yet. D. Members' motions. On that uh, day, the council will deal with two 
members' motions are carried forward from previous meetings without legislative effect. That is, um, House Committee report uh, to consider substitute legislation and instruments. And uh, there's another uh, substitute legislation, uh, list of substitute legislation. The, the deadline for giving notice of for amendment is the 20, uh, for, for amendment is the 29th of November. If member wish to speak, please, uh, before the 20th of November, Monday, uh, before 5 p.m., please inform the Secretariat. Now, I've been doing that as usual. Now, I will allow members a chance to speak on uh, business in relation to the council meeting of the 29th of November. Uh, please press the button. I already said that for the meeting of the 29th of November, uh, the business uh, we're going to deal with, I've mentioned those items. It's now the time for you to give your views. Dr. Kwakaki, please go back to your seat. Otherwise, I'll see, regard that as disorderly conduct. No, I'm there. Miss Claudia Mo, are you not speaking? Dr. Fernando Chung, three members have asked to speak. My point is a point of order. Dr. Fernando Chung, I have a point of order. I believe this arrangement uh, you have now is uh, in contravention of House Rule 20E. Can you please point out what the contravention is? Uh, House Rule 20E, it says that the House Committee meeting is usually held at 2.30 p.m. and the Finance Committee will be scheduled for the same afternoon. If necessary, The House Committee meeting will, if necessary, be suspended at such time when the Finance Committee meeting is scheduled to begin and resume to deal with the unfinished business on the agenda after the Finance Committee meeting. So this is not the meeting arrangement we have this time. And we're saying that after we've completed all House Committee business, then we will proceed to Finance Committee, and that's uh, in breach of um, House Rule 20E. Now, I've uh, studied uh, 20E. I don't agree with your interpretation. Now, it says that the uh, House Committee normally meets every Friday afternoon at 2.30 p.m. full stop when a Finance Committee is scheduled to be held in the same afternoon, but the Finance Committee meeting is not scheduled for this afternoon, so your interpretation is wrong. Now, for business or for the Council meeting of the 29th of November, Dr. Kwakaki, on the 29th of November, what bills will the government table? Because the government keeps, uh, you know, playing along with you. And uh, so you could um, move amendments to the rules of procedure, but they uh, forget about all the other um, serious business. So I, I say this, I find this totally unsatisfactory. And as the chair of the House Committee, you should uh, do your duty. You shouldn't just um, be um, colluding with the government. This is totally shameful. I have to draw a line. Why draw the line again, Miss Claudia Mo? I protest. How can you draw the line randomly? And why is it for you to say it's 30 seconds so everything is random? I need to strike a balance. I think we all know what's going on today. Miss Claudia Mo, if you are not going to speak, now I'm going to give you 30 seconds. Uh, do you wish to speak, Miss? Please start, Miss Mo. This is totally inconceivable. I never thought you would do this. It's really the first time I see you, real, uh, what you like. 30 seconds. You've never explained uh, why 30 seconds. On what basis can you impose a time limit of 30 seconds and then you keep reading and reciting the agenda? So after you recite it, then an item is uh, dealt with. It's totally ridiculous. Ms. Tanya Chen. I'm also concerned there are no bills tabled. We know that uh, usually uh, we may have a clash of meetings, uh, but now we're seeing free meeting slots now uh, during the week. So on the efficiency of uh, con uh, con conduct of government business, uh, council businesses on the quality of our deliberations that could be affected. So I hope you will convey that to the administration. Mr. And Kenneth Leung, for the two proposed resolutions, uh, 
uh, in accordance with the um, interpretation under the interpretation and general clauses ordinance. Can we debate these resolutions? Can you please um, confirm that? And have you uh, received any news uh, from the Chief Secretary that uh, no bills will be tabled before the 31st of December? I'll give an overall response later. Mr. Jeremy Tan. Chairman, I notice that every time you're willing to give members time to speak, and um, you, you wouldn't have just as speak over them. It's just like uh, an election forum. What's going on? I want to say, 29th of November. How come? Um, so far, there is still no uh, bills um, presented or tabled. Can they table bills so that uh, um, there will be some bills for us to deal with um, next time, Mr. Edigu? Well, Miss. Uh, Miss Lee, I will um, give you these words again: that you trample over the dignity of the um, of the council, and you have a ca calling a black white. Well, um, CS for A, Matthew Jones said that uh, there will be some bills. However, there is nothing done. I think you are all um, cahooting with one another. We have the duty to monitor the administration. Don't uh, do. Th don't. Um, um, Cozy up with the administration. Yesterday you criticized the Democrats for filibustering, but you, in effect, are filibustering. You have already said that. I noticed that a number of members have uh, commented on the tabling of um, bills, and three members have already written to the House Committee. I have it all recorded, and we will forward your views to the CS4A members. You know full well that you may write uh, to the CS4A yourself. I don't know what is the latest um, plan of the CS4A. And in, re in reply to Mr. Kenneth Leung's um, um, interpretation and general clauses ordinance, uh, well, uh, if there is an extension, you may speak. If you want uh, to uh, propose amendments, please follow the procedure. Next, uh, report of bills, committee, and subcommittees. A report of committee on training solicitors amendment rules 2017 commencement notice. I ask Mr. Horace Jung to represent um, Ms. Priscilla Priscilla Long to speak. Madam Chair, the training solicitors amendment rules 2017 commencement notice seeks to appoint the 8th of January 2018 as the date on which the trainee solicitors amendment rules 2017 gazetted on the 26th of May 2017 come into operation. The subcommittee held one meeting and completed scrutiny of the notice. The subcommittee supports the notice. In the course of deliberations, the Law Society explained to members the requirements on applications for exemption from employment as trainee solicitors from barristers or solicitor advocates of overseas jurisdictions who wish to practice in Hong Kong. The details of the subcommittee's deliberations are in the report. Uh, members, please note. Thank you. May I remind members the uh, um, Deadline for giving uh, for amending the subcommittee the um, legislation will be on the 29th of November. The deadline for giving notice for amendments is the 22nd of November. Dr. Kwakaki, do you wish to speak on this item? Yes. May I ask the subcommittee chair, please, on the 29th of November, what if we have an amendment? I another uh, the, the commencement day of this. Uh, uh, amendment rule is the 8th of January. So, if we have any amendments uh, to the uh, to this um, uh, rules, then what would be the impact? And if we do it before the 29th, if we can't do it before the 29th of November, would there be an extension of this uh, subsidy legislation? My understanding there cannot be any further extension. But as for the possible impact of the amendments to the rules, then I think it's up to um, um, the members and uh, to consider whether they support the amendment. Ms. Cordia Mo, do you want to speak on this item? I'd like to ask the chairman of the bills committee or the subcommittee. Well, I don't think um, she's here. In relation to um, this new piece of um, regulation, will it affect lawyers joining the 
uh, trade or practicing, and I hear that uh, there is a succession problem in the legal sector. And at the same time, I see that uh, there there is an oversupply of lawyers. Some young um, trainee solicitors have said that uh, well, it, they have been worked uh, too hard. Well, Miss Lung is here, so I'm afraid you can't get an answer from her. You may ask her after the meeting. Mr. Jeremy Tan. Well, I noticed that the extension is uh, to the 29th of November's council meeting. However, in the last agenda, that so far uh, there are no bills uh, tabled on the 29th uh, council, and if we don't still don't see any, and um, what will happen if it doesn't get to it, if it doesn't get to be extended or not? I don't really understand your question. For on technical points, please talk to the secretariat. You know that uh, well. There are a number of times when uh, we could not proceed with extension. There are some uh, government bills, and uh, we will um, decide the order of business according to Rule 18. Next is well, I have already drawn the line. Next is the report of the committee to follow up issues relating to the three one-way system at the Hong Kong International Airport. I ask the chairman, Mr. Wang Ting Kong, to speak. Thank you, Madam Chair. This is a committee to follow up issues relating to the free one-way system at the Hong Kong International Airport has completed its works. Please don't speak. I'm speaking now. Yes, please remain quiet, members. The chair has asked me to speak. Mr. Wong Ting Kwong, please continue. It's my turn to speak. Shut up. Mr. Wong Ting Kwong, please continue. The committee held eight meetings to consider various issues, including airspace management, financial arrangement, works progress, EIA, and relevant green measures and their implementation. Enhancement of the capacity of the existing two runway system, manpower plan, and so on. The subcommittee considers that the free one way system covers many areas with far reaching implications. The Legislative Council should continue to follow up on the project. However, as the project has a time frame of several years, the subcommittee recommends that the project be monitored by the relevant panel. And the government be asked to give half yearly progress report to the panel on economic development. The airport authority should uh, also be involved in giving this half yearly report. The deliberations of this committee and the recommendations are in the report. Uh, members, please note. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, seven, six or seven members asked to speak. Dr. Kokaki, I draw a line. Are you going to ask questions, Dr. Kok? This is serious. So we only have 30 seconds. That's right. Please speak. Well, the chairman of the subcommittee and the loyalists, um, well, are disgraceful. They have done wrong to Hong Kong people because this is a project of um, hundreds of billions of dollars. You all uh, work together to push it through. So. Um, but um, we don't know whether it actually is going to be completed because it's, it costs us $141.5 billion. This is not a good practice. Mr. Jeremy Tan, please speak. The, the subcommittee on the third runway, I do think that there is a need for the work to be extended. And in the House Committee, I have already spoken. Uh, I said that, well, if the, this subcommittee's work is to be extended, it should be given priority. I'm very disappointed that the work um, is, is stopped because there is no platform to monitor whether the project will uh, see another cost overrun. A number of projects, say for example, the subcommittee on the West Kowloon Cultural District as well as the, uh, the ones uh, related to railways have started over a number of years anyway. Ms. Claudia Mo. This subcommittee on the third runway, obviously, is something that the administration wants to do and wants to cozy, wants to um, toady up to the uh, um, main, uh, to, to the central authorities, and then you pretend that, that there will be discussion. So you set up a subcommittee, 
Well, you, now when it's when you've finished um, using this so committee, you simply kill it off. And I can clearly see that you're playing cahoots with the administration. It seems that the decorum and propriety of this uh, council has completely dis disintegrated. Mr. Charles Mock, what is going? Ha what is happening? H half a minute. Is it going to be three seconds next? You don't have to um, stop us uh, filibustering. Members of the public can clearly see what is going on here. Starry Lee, you said that a number of um, matters uh, cannot be extended. What happened yesterday? Because uh, loyalists, loyalists um, filibustered yesterday. It was the loyalists who filibustered yesterday, causing five pieces of surgery legislation uh, not being able to extend it. Mr. Kenny Flam. Well, in relation to this subcommittee of the third runway, uh, the report doesn't mention anything about ATM3, that is the air traffic um, management system. We have done a lot of uh, work, a lot of investigation. ATM3 can't uh, support the operation of the, free of the third runway. How can you say that the work of the subcommittee has finished? I do hope that uh, the work of the subcommittee can continue because it is about um, Air, traf air traffic safety, Ms. Tenya Chan. When in relation to uh, subcommittees um, going over several years, because the third runway cost us $151.4 billion, well, actually, it's $141.5 billion. It seems that they don't need funding from the uh, a funding approval from the uh, Legislative Council. However, they have spent a lot of money, and I don't think a monitoring of uh, their work is sufficient because there is serious project cost uh, project um, cost overrun. Mr. Ray Chen, in relation to the Chalapcock Air Airport, there was a subcommittee following his work uh, from ni from um, 91 to 94, 54 meetings, even after the project has started. We're talking about the third runway system costing over $100 billion. Uh, the work has just started. We don't know what, what problems uh, they would encounter or what problems we will see. Well, the uh, contractor of the uh, Hong Kong Joy Macau Bridge is also responsible for the third runway. So so will there be some kind of um, uh, drifting of, uh, the f of, of the work? Well, starting from this year, a lot of members want to follow up on a number of topics. And that's why you need to understand that on a number of uh, policy issues, uh, there are subcommittees on the waiting list. And it is a fact that um, the subcommittee uh, has to stop its work. But if necessary, I'm sure that all members can continue to monitor the um, project. And if there are any issues, you may raise them in uh, in a panel meeting. Item number six: a position on bills committee and subcommittees. Members, uh, please be informed that uh, as at the 16th of November, Thursday, there are 16 bills committee in operation, 18 subcommittees under the House committee, for Subcommittees are under the under the on the panel, and on the waiting list uh, there are ten uh, subcommittees on uh, policy issues. Mr. Kanifla, Mr. Charles Mock, and Mr. Wu Chi Wai sent letters to say that um, they would like to uh, move motions under this item to urge the administration to give notice as soon as possible to resume uh, the CSA on SAM duty amendment bill 2017. And the second um, reading debate on supplementary appropriation 2016-17 bill, as well as the statute and uh, statute law miscellaneous provisions bill 2017. The Secretariat has sent the three letters to you. I am sure you all know that uh, the this agenda item is to report to you the positions of bills committees and um, subcommittees. This is not for discussion. Members want to move a motion under this uh, item. I would like to say that uh, under the House Rules and the ROP, there are no provisions uh, stating the procedure for moving motions under this item. Under 20P of the House Rule, it says that um, members may move motions. However, under 75 bracket 11 of the ROP, well, the House uh, Committee may decide uh, as we think fit how to deal with such motions. I have looked at the record. The chairman of the House Committee can only, with the consent of members, 
once in the capacity of a House committee moves such a motion because I'm fully aware that um, the past past practice members have shown different views when it comes to um, how to handle it. So I first ask members uh, to um, decide uh, whether we we will deal with the views of the three members. If members decide that they are to be dealt with, then I will allow members to speak. First, let me ask how many members would like to speak. I'll draw a line, Dr. Kwakaki. I'll give you one minute. Dr. Kwakaki. Mr. Kenny Flynn, what's your point of order? So are we going to deal with it one by one or what? I've already said so. Well, since um, in the House Committee uh, there has been no precedence dealing with emotions, and I've looked up the rec um, past record, well, it will be discussed by the entire House Committee, so we will have an overall discussion. Dr. K. K. Kwok. Mr. Chu Hai, uh, Eddie Chu, I have um, made reference to the rules of procedure and the House rule, and also the uh, rules of panels. House rules of panels. I've also, after receiving your um, letters, I've um, done some homework and um, checked past record. Now, there's been no precedent of moving such motions. There was just one case, and it was with the consensus of the House Committee. And so, in the past, uh, uh, the decision is left to the House Committee. So that's why uh, I will allow members to vote on this. But I see a number of members wish to speak. Point of order. Dr. Kwok, do you wish to speak? Yes, I wish to, I want to speak. But please, point of order, stop the clock. Point of order. To be fair, you should allow the three members to give their views before we respond. Dr. Kwok, that is not really a point of order. First, the letters have been forwarded to members. So as members, you have all read the letters. There's no need to read them out again. And as I said, we should first decide whether to consider these motions. So I've already um, explained that um, uh, if it's again point of order, well, I may have to um, shorten the time limit again. Mr. Chairman, Tam, what is your point of order? The free letters. This is not in. These are not in the um, website of Letchco. So I don't know which free letters you're talking about. The uh, letters have been forwarded to you by the secretary beforehand, but it's not in the agenda online. Members, if you know, uh, follow the um, papers issued by the secretary, you know what's going on. Dr. K. K. Kwok, are you going to speak? Yes, of course I'm going to speak. This is outrageous. Now you that is at the very least of courtesy to allow the free members to explain their letter the free, uh, free members have spent time and effort to write letters to us and uh, Mr Tam has made it clear that he can't find it on the, the our website and for the public following this live for uh, webcast or they try to uh, look up the paper, then the secretary has not done its job to make public the letters. But as the chair, you just disregard it. Is it 30 minutes, seconds again? No, I have no choice. You accuse the secretariat and me just now, so I must clarify that. I'm, uh, as I said, I must first uh, seek the agreement of this committee to deal with the items first. Actually, already yesterday, the press uh, uh, made a, were made aware of these three letters, so everybody knows about them. Mr. Eddie Chu, my colleague just uh, printed out the three letters for me. Mr. Kenneth Lang, Mr. Charles Mock, and Mr. Wu Chi Wei. Ask the House Committee to urge the government to uh, table the Stamp Duty Amendment Bill 2017, the Supplementary Appropriation uh, Bill, and also the Statute Law Miscellaneous Provisions Bill as soon as possible. These are reasonable requests because uh, all these um, bills, three bills, have been considered. And uh, Matthew Jones said there 
is no plan not to go by the convention in tabling this bills at Lechco. Yes, you have already made your point clearly, Mr. Mr. Uh, Dr. Fernando Zhang. Now, if you don't speak, I'll let another member speak. Yes, um, he hasn't finished, Madam Chair. You, know, I think you know and understand it. You know, members uh, could be eloquent, uh, very eloquent. I haven't finished. Dr. Fernando Zhang, if you're not going to speak, I'll invite the next member to speak. Yes, please continue. Now, I'm serving my third term in this council. I've never seen a chair to impose a time limit of 30 seconds for members to speak. Really, it's only four now. And we're going to 7.30, where you're rushing off to. What's the rush? So, um, is it that uh, you want the, pro the loyalists to pass all the amendments and then you'll be happy? Is that it, Mr. Jeremy Tam? 30 seconds, three letters here. That's 30 seconds, not in even enough to talk about one letter. But anyway, for the three letters. There are points in these three letters that uh, should be supported. And I support that we um, include these three letters for on the agenda here, just for our discussion at least. And uh, these three letters are not on our website. Uh, you're repeating yourself, Miss Claudia Mo. Uh, because I need to strike a balance. No, I can stay here with you uh, 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 if you have further questions tonight. I thought you said one minute. Ms. Claudia Mo, are you going to speak? 30 seconds. I said uh, I, it, it, I will see. Stop the clock, please. Give uh, Ms. Mo 30 seconds. Please start now. You know the Secretariat of Lechko, you just serving the pro-establishment camp before I even started to speak, you already started counting, you know, 10 minute seconds out of 30 seconds, it is totally ridiculous. Who's in control of the uh, clock? If you're not going to speak, I'll, I'll invite the next member to speak, Ms. Claudia Mo. Yes, please start the clock again, Ms. Claudia Mo. 30 seconds, okay. Even on just one letter, I can speak for three minutes. And then the letter's not even uploaded on the website. Who's in the wrong? I will find out for sure. I want to know why these three letters are not on the uh, on, on our website. Uh, it's totally ridiculous. Um, how come we don't let the public see them? These three letters make perfect sense. We definitely, definitely must support them. Now, I must clarify this because I'm afraid um, the, the, those following the discussion don't know what uh, it's about. Now, here we must we are first considering whether we will deal with the free letters. We are not going to deal with the content of the free letters yet. And members are able to express themselves in a short time. They've done it in the past. I'm sure they can do it today. Mr. Martin Leo. Now, if individual member wishes, uh, the, 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 has, has such a request, they can write directly to the administration. Uh, we, they shouldn't go through the House Committee. Yes, the House Committee is to deal with uh, when uh, the, the procedure for resuming second and third reading of bills. We shouldn't start a bad precedent. We shouldn't um, breach the convention of this House Committee. You, Ms. Tanya Chen, well, I don't see where the rules, uh, the chair said one minute, and then uh, Jeremy Tam said um, uh, these three letters are not uploaded to website, and then all of a sudden time limit is 30 seconds. So uh, when he told you these letters are not uploaded to the website, then the time limit is cut to 30 seconds. I don't get it. And each letter is different. I don't know why you won't even allow the author of the letter to explain why they want to include these letters in the agenda. And to respond to Martin, yes, Mr. Charles Mock, I'm worried, uh, as you said, uh, Chair, that people uh, don't know what's going on. 
Now, maybe uh, people see that uh, electric is becoming more and more of a rubber stamp. You won't let us speak. Uh, 30 seconds will become 15 seconds or 5 seconds even. And uh, in future, we can only vote yes, we can't vote no. Or you will even evict me. That's the, uh, how can you conduct a meeting like that? And you won't even give um, the authors of the letters to explain the letters. Uh, it won't even take 30 seconds. It, 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 takes more than 30 seconds to read the letter. Now, if um, with the, with the motion is passed, then I will give you a chance to explain the letters. But there's no chance of this being passed. Mr. Wuchi Wei, are you going to speak? As a member of the Legislative Council, for important matters, we want them to be tabled. We don't want the any uh, this, the dispute with the rules of procedure to affect people's livelihood. I'm talking about the um, statute law miscellaneous provisions uh, bill. Yes, it's not complicated, but it's important. And it's an important bill, and the government won't even table it. And so even how can it be wrong for members to raise that request? Okay, Mr. Kenneth Leung, I have to draw the line after 16 members. Now, on the bill... Uh, it's so strange that uh, the government's not uh, tabling the uh, the stamp duty bill because the government said that after the collocation motion is passed, the government will table will resume the consideration of the bill. But are we going to wait weeks or months? I think it's now time for the government to um, table the stamp duty amendment bill again for discussion because um, law firms don't know what to do with the stamp duty. Payment they receive from buyers. Yes, uh, you've uh, stated made your point clear, Mr. Gary Chen. Members, quiet please, Mr. Gary Chen. Madam Chair, as you said, unless there's a consensus in the House Committee, otherwise we shouldn't deal with such motions. And House Committee is to consider the arrangement at Council meeting is appropriate for us to deal with such motions. It's also a, uh, is a matter for the administration as to when to resume second reading of a bill. If you think the administration is moving too slowly, you should write directly to the administration. You shouldn't you, uh, go through this House Committee, otherwise it's abuse of procedure. Mr. Ray Chen. How can that be re abuse of procedure? We asked you to, to meet with the sec chief secretary. You gave us 30 seconds to speak, and now we write, and then you say uh, we want to have a discussion here, and then you s uh, we could then give a collective view, and then um, you say there's abuse of procedure. Then what can we say? So uh, you won't even listen to us. You won't even let us explain, and then you're going to vote no. Then what's the point of um, continuing with the meeting, Mr. Jer Jeffrey Lamb? I understand um, at the Legislative Council the content of free letters have been dealt with. The House Committee is to deal with um, the uh, agenda of the uh, Council meeting. If we deal with motions here, it's not appropriate. If everyone wants to um, turn something they want to talk about into a motion, then there will be an endless list. It's stated clearly in the rules of procedure. Members should not shout from their seats without um, being called upon to speak by the chair. So please enforce that rule. Mr. Kwok Wai Kong, well, we know what these three letters are really meant for. Now, when uh, the chair has said that um, they abused the point of order to try to store things, and in fact, at the end, uh, 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 after he, she raised each item, she allowed time for members to discuss the item. So I think all these points have been dealt with. Please proceed with the meeting. Mr. Elvin Young. Well, this is an eye opener. So how do the pro how does the pro establishment camp see the House Committee? We want to raise important issues here at the House Committee for discussion. And the public can't even read the free letters. Now, Mr. Kenneth Leung, Mr. Charles Mock, and Mr. Wu Chiwai are referring to reference bills, and they have a strong case. So the House Committee should uh, together impose a, a set pressure on the government so they could table the bill soon. And then you're saying this is nothing to do with the House Committee? How can that be? 
Mr. Kim Yun, well, members may not agree to the way these letters are drafted, but um, they should, there should be an ample opportunity for us to express our views. Why is it 30 seconds again? So once again, Madam Chair, under any circumstance, 30 seconds as a speaking time limit is unreasonable. The chair should uh, facilitate the conduct of meeting. The chair should not be restricting members' right to speak. I, I note that there are different views. As per my proposal, uh, let's vote on whether to deal with the motions proposed by three members. Yes, yeah, just just one vote, because uh, once we've dealt with that, we will have separate discussions on the three letters. Anyone claims a division? Um, Mr. Gary Chan claims a division. The motion is to whether to discuss. Dr. Fernando Joe, uh, please ring the bell. My understanding is that these uh, these three motions uh, involved a different. Um, bills. I may agree with one and not the other two, or two, not the other one. So how am I supposed to vote? We will uh, vote collectively on uh, whether to deal with members' motion. If it if it is carried, I will let you uh, speak on individual items. Uh, I think that this has been uh, the practice of the House Committee. But these are three different topics based on what? Uh, please ring the bell. Mr. Ju, well, Chairman, you have assessed something, but it was all mumble jumbo. I didn't really understand you. So, based on uh, which rule of the uh, House rule or the rules of procedure um, did you make this decision? Sorry, I have already spoken twice on this. I'm afraid I can't repeat. Mr. Andrew Wen, Dr. Zhang has raised a very important uh, procedural and logical point. These three items are different, but you have bundled them into one vote. It doesn't work like that. I think you're wrong, because we're only dealing with whether to deal with the motions. But there are different considerations, say, for example, um, level of urgency or, or importance. Mr. Mock, in, a, in the future, Chairman, if you want to uh, rush over meetings, perhaps at the, at the beginning you say that, well, let's have a vote on all the items um, uh, once and for all. Then you don't have to read the agenda, and they will be quickly dealt with. And, you're, and you only need one minute for a House committee meeting. You can set a precedent, and that can happen in the future, because that is exactly what is happening now. If you have uh, views to express, understand. No, if this if that is the way we conduct meetings in the future, you can say this is the way I'm going to deal with it in the future. Ms. Anya Chan, I don't know whether you have read these three letters. Do you remember um, what they are about? Every letter is different, so I don't understand. On what basis uh, can you have a, a consolidated uh, vote? Well. I'll let you off if you give us only 30 seconds. And you have already asked the bell to be rung. I don't understand. How can they be consolidated? One is about the uh, Supplementary Appropriation Bill. The other one is about the Statute Law, Miscellaneous Provisions Bill. And the third one is Stand Duty. These three are different. How can there be a consolidated vote? I do believe that members understand that this is only a vote on whether to deal with the motion. But all three are different. Well, we will vote on that, whether to deal with that before we move on to uh, the next step. Well, in the future, we don't need any meeting, no FC, no HC, because there will only be one vote. It's simply illogical. I have already clearly pointed out, Mr. Charles Mock, Mr. Uh, Kenneth Lang, and Mr. Wu Chi Wai sent letters uh, to the HC. Um, in relation to the uh, CSA, uh, the committee stage of the stamp duty amendment bill 2017, and the second reading debate on supplementary appropriation 2016-17 bill and the statute law miscellaneous provisions bill 2017, we will have to first deal with the motion before we go into individual discussions. Please understand, Ms. Claudia Mo. What is your point of order? 
I did not say that is a point of order. Then you can't speak. No. I now ask Mr. Alvin Young. If your logic stands, then it is a really bad precedent because there are three letters covering three different topics. What One is about the committee stage. One is uh, second reading. So I would like Chairman you to explain your logic and your justification because in the future, uh, should a member uh, want to um, want to deal with uh, first reading, committee stage, you bundle them all. Is it because the, all these letters are sent by members of a pan-democratic camp? This is not a time to discuss the uh, contents of, this, of these letters. This is just about to whether to deal with the motions. We don't have 37 days, sorry. Uh, I can exercise discretion to not deal with it, but I will allow you to discuss it. Because um, there is uh, no provisions catering for deal the dealing of uh, motions in the House Committee. So we'll now vote on whether to deal with the um, motions moved by three members. Voting begins. Members, please press the white button to indicate your presence before you cast your vote. When I, before I announce that voting is closed, yes, Mr. Kinyun. Well, it's time for voting. Well, if it's about uh, uh, meeting arrangements, you can ask the questions later. Before I announce that voting is closed, please check your votes. If there are no problems, Mr. Ip Kin Yun, uh, you haven't voted. Let me finish, please. Well, everyone can see how you deal with it. The world can see it, and this is illogical, completely illogical. And this, if if this is the way you handle it, this is not a point of order. I ask members to to check your vote if there are no problems. Yes, Mr. Andrew, when was your uh, was your question? It can only be a point of order. I want to ask uh, the secretariat. I want to hear some professional advice whether this um, is uh, correct. This procedure is correct. Voting is closed. Um, please uh, show the uh, voting result. 15 yes, uh, 34 no, no abstention. Uh, the, quest, uh, the question is uh, negatived. Item 7, reports of the Committee on Rules of Procedure Amendments to the Rules of Procedure proposed by members. A report of the Committee on Rules of Procedure. B letter dated sixth of November twenty seventeen from Dennis Kwok. C letter from Mr. Martin Liu on behalf of thirty of thirty eight members uh, from Mr. Kwok, eight, ten members in relation to the uh, forty eight members um, suggestions of, of amendment of the ROP. The uh, CROP has already um, vetted all the uh, proposals and discussed. Um, these items. A report has been uh, submitted as well. Mr. Dennis Kwok will, on behalf of 10 members, um, make um, such, um, proposals for amendment, and Mr. Liu, on behalf of 38 uh, members. They have sent letters uh, to us. And as members have uh, stated in the report, according to current procedure, the committee will um, look, in, look in detail the proposed Amendment. If an individual, if members can reach consensus on a certain amendment, the committee may seek the consent, uh, seek the agreement of the House Committee, and um, move a proposed resolution in the Council meeting to seek the Council's approval to amend those uh, rules. I have to emphasize that the House Committee is not the platform to discuss individual pr um, proposed amendments. In relation to proposed amendments to the ROP, the President has replied to. Um, members concern that um, they will ha we will have to wait till the committee and the House committee have dealt with the proposed amendments before the president will decide after taking into account various factors you now whether whether these proposed resolutions are in order and if they are then they will become agenda items in the council well I have want to uh, do it in this way. There will be a discussion for members to express their views, and then this part will there will be a verbatim record. And I ask members to take it, to uh, take note of the uh, order of speaking. I will first ask Mr. Porter to speak. Uh, he is the chairman of the committee, and then I will ask um, 
uh, members' view on this proposal. And then I will ask uh, Mr. Dennis Kwok to speak on behalf of the 10 members and Mr. Martin Liu to speak on behalf of the 30 before I ask members to speak. Thank you, Madam Chair. The Committee on Rules of Procedure held a meeting on the 6th of November 2017 to deal with proposed amendments to the Rules of Procedure by 48 members referred by the President in accordance with Rule 74, Bracket 1 of the Rules of Procedure. Uh, some members have also moved amendments to the proposed amendments. Given the voluminous amendments that have to be examined and no precedence of individual members giving notice to move proposed resolutions, after Mr. Chair speaks, the other members can also give their views. To, to amend uh, ROP at a council meeting even before or parallel to crop's processing of such proposed amendments, crop has decided under extraordinary circumstances to focus on examining whether a proposed amendment entails constitutional or legal implications and if there is a consensus among crop members present at the meeting. If the above requirements are met and subject to the views of the House Committee, the crop chairman will move a proposed resolution seeking approval for effecting the proposed amendment to rules of procedure at a council meeting. Otherwise, crop will not proceed with the proposed amendment and it will be up to the original proponents to consider whether he or she would proceed in his or her individual capacity to give notice of the proposed amendment to seek the Council's approval on their proposed amendment. During the deliberations, some members expressed concern that some of the proposed amendments sought to widen the powers of the President and Committee Chairman without corresponding provisions on how the widened powers might be exercised. Crop members further noted that some of the proposed amendments might be inconsistent with other existing rules and provisions in ROP. As regards the proposed amendment to require one half of all members to, of the Council to support a request for a petition to be referred to the House Committee, some members commented that the proposal would effectively curtail the use of the current petition mechanism in the ROP by members in the minority. On the proposal to specify that the quorum of a committee of the whole council should be 20 members, including the chairman, some members expressed concern that the legal advice on the aforesaid amendments submitted by proponents to crop was inconsistent with the legal advices from external councils obtained by the president on two previous occasions. They commented that the proposed amendment might have profound constitutional and legal ramifications to be subject and be subject to judicial review and should therefore be proceeded with cautiously. Crop noted that a number of proposed amendments may be inconsistent with certain articles of the basic law or provisions of the existing legislation, whereas some proposed amendments might have starving and resource implications. To sum up the discussion of Crop, with the exception of the tax show amendments proposed by Mr. Charles Kwok, Mock to replace the Chinese character Gui by Gui in various rules, no consensus can be reached on any of the other proposals. Members are invited to endorse that the crop chairman to move a proposed resolution at a council meeting to amend Gui wherever it appears in the rules of procedure to Gui and to approve that similar text amendments be made to the House rule. Members are also invited to take note of crops deliberations on the other proposals to amend ROP by members. Thank you, Madam Chair. Many members have points of order. Yes, please press the button. I will give you a chance. Uh, I'll let you speak. Well, I was going to uh, give more time to Mr. Kenneth Leung and also Mr. Tommy Jung relative more time to speak because they speak on behalf of members. I'll give to four I'll give them four to five minutes each. But now, uh, first point of order. But because it is rather chaotic here in this room, so I propose that we adjourn the meeting for 10 minutes. Uh, around 4.40, we'll resume the meeting. Thank you.